Hello, how are you doing? On behalf of the Badminton Pan American Confederation, we give you the warmest welcome to our Coach Corner program. Today, we have the pleasure once again of having one of the most emblematic badminton coaches in France. I'm talking about Coach Vincent Basile, who's going to talk about a very interesting topic, the path of the formation of the young player in France, tactical and technical aspects. But before leaving you with Vincent, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our guest's career. As a player, in 2002, he reached top 13 of men doubles in the world ranking. As a coach, he has been the national coach of the French juniors team. As a coach educator, he has more than five years of experience teaching high level coaches. So good evening in France, Vincent. Welcome to our program and thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us to your home in the city of Strasbourg. Thank you actually for welcoming me to this webinar. I'm going to share my screen now. Thank you for giving me the option and the possibility to share what we've done here in France in regards to young athletes training and all the technical and tactical aspects. We are here tonight to talk about these topics as well as to talk about physical preparation. Of course, this should always be linked to the young athletes education in France. I think that it would be important to start talking about the different devices that we have in place for all young athletes in France. This is our first device, which was uh, established in the year 2010, which was, which includes the basis for training our athletes. This is the center for young athletes. They start when they are five years old. And after the year 2010, we actually established this center in order to increase the number of athletes in France. That's one of our main goals. So they can improve their performance. Also to improve the level of the player's game in France. That was in the year 2010. The remaining Devices that I'm showing here on the screen, especially for young athletes, are devices that are that complement the first one and would make no sense if the first device, the dispositif jeune, wouldn't exist. So in the year 20, between the year 2014 and 2017, we worked on analyzing high-level badminton in France in order to have a more technical orientation for high level, which allowed us to learn priorities. So we tried to organize priorities between the year 2017 and 2018. So today I'm going to present a theory of edu this education that we have, which represents learning until 19 years old for any player that wants to move to high performance in France. Finally, the last document or device that we published in the year 2019 is for physical preparation, which is based on the same uh, fundamentals as uh, technical preparation and for tactical preparation. We are going to uh, get together um, on May 18th to see the second part of this presentation. Today, we're going to see the technical tactical preparation and in May, we'll see the, prep, the physical preparation. So let's focus on the first document, the technical tactical document. It's important to really understand the goals that we have set for ourselves in order to work and set these 
technical tactical um, formation pathway. We need to prioritize the technical tactical learning for young athletes between nine and 19 years old. So all uh, high level athletes can have the same for, uh, formation or education, which hadn't been done before actually in high performance. So we could actually have a culture, a one single common culture with one single common language. This was really important. It's been a decade since we started promoting this common culture. Also to be able to understand that throughout the territory, we have one single language. The technical tactical permission is important, but we're also talking about this common language. Another goal we had was to uh, harmonize the evaluations that we did for all levels. When I say harmonize, I mean analyzing, evaluating, and understanding what's going on. And this was thanks to the trajectory of the fixed criteria and indicators for all coaches in France who are in charge of athletes, young athletes. So they can practice with uh, at a high performance level. So what were these objectives? We had to understand it, our target, our target audience. The first target audience is between nine and 13 years old. So very young athletes. Young athletes that start uh, training intensely are supported by 50 clubs, which are in charge of having a structure that will help them develop. We have around 50 of uh, these clubs. They're called the future clubs or avenir clubs in French. So we are trying to make them grow so they can become high uh, performance athletes. This is the first step that we have in our pathway. The second target audience is between 13 and 16 years old. We have nine regional centers in this case, besides of course the 50 clubs that continue um, accompanying the high performance uh, athletes. Now these uh, nine regional centers are uh, located throughout the French territory. We have approximately 100 athletes plus the ones from the clubs. So the third group includes athletes from 16 to 19 years old, which who are grouped in two different groups in Strasbourg and in Bordeaux. These are two na national centers in France. And of course, together with the clubs who continue as always accompanying all athletes until the senior international level. So this is the same, or this is the final destination for the whole structure that we have here. We have uh, the these avenue clubs or future clubs, the regional centers and the national centers. So in total, we have an approximate of 230 athletes from nine to 19 years old who will represent the future of French badminton. So we can have a senior team. So later on, they can become professional athletes. Now it's important to understand the general philosophy of the game. When we were raising awareness and understanding of what we wanted to do, uh, we thought that, that our goal was to work in order to prepare against any possible restriction that we might find in a situation of competition. It's really important to understand what the characteristics are in a situation of competition in order to have that as a reference for any possible situation you need to understand that there are priorities in training 
and we have to prioritize our readiness for a competition situation. Now, it is kind of difficult because nowadays there are very few competitions in France. We have, or there are many problems because we have a very complicated system, but here you can see our uh, for formation path for our athletes. So it's not easy to uh, predict a competition because it's actually unpredictable. So we need to, to prepare for this uncertainty. What can we actually predict? Because if everything were easy to predict, then it would be a lot easier, but we need to try to uh, manage what cannot be predicted. In a, situ in a competition situation, we see that this is very complex because there are many elements interacting with each other. So in order to have an optimal performance, we try to avoid certain elements and think actually that the fact that we need to add what the elements that we have in order to improve our performance, well, of course, we have the obligation to simplify everything in an objective way, but we always need to reorganize things in case we have to. So a competition has a unique nature. A competition is not the same every time. That's why it's important for the athlete to be ready to face this unique factor of each competition. Each competition is unique, each emotion is unique, and we have to learn to manage it, to manage it. So our goal is to prepare athletes for these situations of competition. In a more precise way, we have to think, what can we do in order to take into account this situation in a more specific way and in a more practical way? We can see the relation between strength and exchange. In a badminton competition or in a badminton exchange, we see that there's always a relationship with strength. And we can see how there's an exchange which can be favorable or not depending on how on what we feel in regards to our opponent we can see that a, a competition can be favorable or not very favorable depending on the points we make so the idea is to um, climb these ladders so we can get to the very favorable level so we have to understand that it's always important to work on the relation between strength and exchange, which is essential. Once again, in order to get to a more practical aspect, I propose uh, this way to visualize this relationship between strength and in an exchange. This is just one example. So here you can see a badminton court. Here's the net. And here, in this gray area, uh, the shuttle can land in this gray area. So there is a relationship between strength and the exchange. So where will the shuttle land? So this could be favorable or not. Let me give you an example. This is a very schematic example, which can obviously be adapted to the level of your athletes or to the characteristics of each athlete. So here we can quickly understand that when we hit the shuttle to this area over here, we are in a favorable area or not so favorable. So there is a neighbor that is very favorable, another area that is neutral, which is over here. So it's 
it includes pretty much the whole uh, the whole middle area, and then we have an unfavorable area where we are uh, uh, under difficulties. So, in this area over here, in the green area, the area that is favorable, very favorable, this is where this becomes essential. The information I'm going to present is to give you the possibility to perform the best way possible in this neutral area. And it's between favorable and the unfavorable area. So this is based on the men singles only. I would recommend to show your athlete this diagram so they can actually understand and visualize the quality of the relationship between strength and exchange. Another point that is important in terms of the philosophy of this is that badminton nowadays, or actually the future of badminton, will be played in this area over here. So we need to try to, well, as coaches, we need to try to use the necessary tools in order to work on this space. So our athlete can be in a situation in which uh, they play in this area primarily, in the, which is in the first half of the court. So he can be audacious, a creative, confident in himself. He can anticipate and also uh, focus on the game in order to avoid uncertainty which is caused by the other athlete by the opponent in, in order to be able to play the game this is what we do at least we really we strongly believe that we need to manage this area over here so it's possible that with the new changes uh, in regards to uh, the scores the situation uh, my change next year. So now let's get into the details of the tools for athletes in order to answer to this uh, different relationship between strength and exchange. The first block includes playing in a strategic way. in a tactical way. So then we can move on to the next uh, blocks. We have another block that is based on the way in which one moves uh, in the court. So to be rhythmic. So how my foot steps on the floor, also the timing of the movement. So it's with specific rhythm. But if timing is very tight in a situation, it will depend on the, on the score that we have or how we want to finish a game. And this will depend on the situation. And the last block is to focus on the shot itself. This is a very strong element to uh, try to destabilize the opponent with each strike, with each stroke. So we need, to, so the other, so your opponent can work on his or her defense. So we want to create problems for our opponent. So they need to create problems for our opponent that are unpredictable. So they are unique and complex. And now I'm going to explain the different elements. First, we have the first shots. Then another important part as well 
uh, when we're talking about exchanging doubles list, we see in, in France that we are working a lot on the first shots and work them all together, especially in singles and doubles as well. It's also important to be more demanding. The second element here is the shot of uh, when you are trying to respond. So we have to think where we are located in order to respond to the sh to the next shot, depending on where you are and how your opponent just hit the shuttle. We also need to think about the plane between. That's what we call in France the in between. We need to work near the net. We usually do these in men and women singles, but you not you don't always play near the net. So we need to work in the mid court mainly. So we have also to think about how we move in the court according to our timing. So we need to see how we move around. We also see how we recover after uh, making a score, after scoring. And this depends on the situation which an athlete is, how he is supported in order to play stronger and destabilize the, his or her opponent in order to be in a favorable situation and not an unfavorable situation. Another element that we're going to develop as well is how the foot steps on the floor when we move. That goes together with the shot after you responded. And that has to do with the relationship between strength and exchange. The third block is also to destabilize. We always need to be able to maneuver a lot and under, and, and change the rhythm and change the speed and agility. We also needed to relax and grab, uh, well, what we call finger power. In other words, we need to try to maneuver better. And also we need to focus on the game. And finally, the last, one, which is to always be ready. In other words, to be ready to uh, hit the shuttle quickly and move around the court quickly in order to destabilize my opponent and to increase my chances of scoring. So we need to understand that these three blocks are interrelated to be ready for anything. How we grab the racket and how we handle it. So everything is related. There's also a very huge complexity here. So it is very important for coaches to be able to manage all of these topics. Well, all of these elements, we've organized all of these elements according to their priority, depending on the period. If it's a high, medium or low. So what I was saying, we have the highest priority for athletes between nine to 13 years old. So we have well, I'm not gonna mention all of them, but I'm going to try to organize uh, these so I can explain what's more pertinent for each uh, age group. For example, between 16 and 19, it is the most important part for singles or doubles. I mean, to be able to choose, they have to decide if they are going to be a singles player or a doubles player between six, 
the ages of 16 and 19 years old. So these are the different priorities. For example, between 13 and 16. We also have the median priorities. These are more related to raising awareness, but that's not a real priority. For example, between 13 and 16 years old, this is the individualization. Um, for those who have difficulties, there are certain elements as well for them. And the low priorities are uh, issues that are, we don't see much in society. For example, to be able to be, to, to maneuver by the, when you are between 13 and 16 years old, you should also be able to maneuver. Now, talking about the formation pathway, we have here practical files, and these ones re represent each one of our 20 priorities, uh, high priorities. You can find them here in this practical um, templates and each uh, coach has to work on this. And here's an example. These uh, sheets or templates that we have uh, has, a, has a lot of content, for example, uh, how the foot steps on the floor and for example, the rhythm of movement as well. Now, we always start every practice with a definition. Each one of these um, templates have a definition because it's important to have a common language. So what's these, um, these foot shot? So here's the definition. What's the definition? Synchronization of the way in which the foot steps on the floor and the shot of the, uh, how you hit the shuttle. And this helps us systematize the construction of the exchange. Remember that we have favorable, non un unfavorable situations in order to build our exchange depending on the strength. So the way in which your foot is stepping the floor is very important because that allows us to prepare the following shot. So this is essential, essential for any deception, for example. Athletes should also uh, be able to do different types of jumps depending on the, his or her positioning and what they want to do uh, later on. And of course, foot positioning cannot be ignored when you want to actually make a score, when you actually want to score. The second element that we propose in these practical sheets or templates uh, is the, the tactic, the tactics. You need to uh, find your rhythm for the next shot. So between the shot that we just made and the next shot. So this is the in between and we need to, we have to establish some tactics in order to position ourselves in a more effective way. So here are some examples of a Thai athlete who has a very good positioning. She does it really well. And then we have a jump and we can see the shot as well. So you can see that uh, this person has a very good foot positioning. So as I said before, this is an, uh, an example in singles. We can think that it's very important when we try to destabilize our opponent. And we also, and this also can um, take us to an unfavorable situation. And we have to define the number of the score that we have.
I've given you some examples in terms of preparation. And in this situation, this neutral situation, which might be not very favorable, we have to make it the most favorable. So here we have a positioning that shows us that the next shot will be really important in order to finish with a score, making a point. So he is looking for the shuttle and the, the, his arm is strong and also his foot is showing the next shot and he will be able to continue and make a chain with the next shot. Here we can also see how she is, how this positioning is helping her do the shot. Just because we're giving a lot of importance to this type of game. I, this is Karina Marin who jumps to intercept the shuttle and she's going to step really well in order to shut the shuttle, in order to shut the shuttle, but here you can see that she's not actually, on the left side, you see that there's not a maximum uh, jump to hit the shuttle, but he wants to get ready for the next shot that's coming. So here you can see another athlete was doing the same. And we see that at every, we see that every time they, this situation is not very favorable because you're, the, the athlete is in the back of the court, but they always need to change these shots in order to move to a more favorable situation. So these are the examples that we can see. A very favorable situation, of course, is this one. When you are in a very favorable situation, the food sometimes can be ignored, which is not good. So here we see that the shuttle was not very favorable, but in order to get to the situation, it's important to have the shot ready or just service. And when you hit it most efficient way possible in order to be ready to get to this kind of stage. So we've noticed that a favorable situation can lead to a making a score. There are also unfavorable, unfavorable situations like this one evidently with this small, this small shot, for example, this foot can be ignored, but this is an extreme situation in which we shouldn't actually work a lot on this because we wanted to give this, this relationship. And this is what I can tell you in regards to the aspects of the practical sheets or templates. And now let's use one that is more based on training. For uh, high priorities, we recommend certain abil abil abilities that one athlete should have at certain age, which allow us to evaluate certain athletes. So how you can do an extreme deception, for example, you should be able to uh, move your foot in order to re re uh, receive a, a, or do a jump. We should always prioritize uh, your foot when trying to make a shot in order to score. If you are well positioned sometimes, uh, you are not in, you are just in a neutral situation or you're in an unfavorable situation, but you need to be really involved in the game. So we also have certain videos, for example, in order to improve understanding. Uh, so our athletes can know, can know what we are trying to do. So for we have videos uh, for everything. I also have uh, examples of situations with videos. Now I'm going to show you where we can find this, which is the formation pathway for coaches 
I'm going to go to the Federation's website. So we are on the Federation's website. Here you can see the formation pathway of an athlete. This is the PDF uh, file. And here you can see all the different files or templates or sheets that I mentioned. This is, for example, the, the foot sh shot that I mentioned before. Another, another thing that we can uh, watch is uh, this YouTube channel from uh, the Federation, which is for new coaches. And this has a lot of videos, more than 50 videos now. In order to enrich training and coaching, and athletes formation, athletes education. I'm going to show you the video corresponding to the foot shot with a different, oh, here we have a video that summarizes everything that we just discussed in terms of the foot shot. Check it out. So this video explains with pictures what we mean. This is a positioning of the shot and how you position your or your foot just as in a competition situation to show importance of every element. These are the different elements of a young athlete. These are pedagogical videos. We can jump to another video. For example, this is how to get ready to support. Here you can see the trajectory or the pathway of a young athlete. These are some practical videos. Let's watch an example. How to play in a reduced uh, space in order to work on the shot. There's always a very short explanation. Here we can also see this practical example and then we see the pedagogical situation that we propose in order to work on the different elements with variations. And that's what we show with the situation that we show in the video. This is an exercise where we can see that the space has been reduced. We are eliminating this space that uh, is in the back part of the court in order to work on the neutral uh, section, as well as on the quality shot in unfavorable situations. So this is for athletes between nine and 13 years old. We also have other exercises for every age, between nine to 13, between 13 to 16 years old, and so on and so forth. Now, this is my technical tactical proposal. And now let's move on to the Q&A because I think that we are, we still have some time for questions. Thank you. 
Well, now we move on to our Q&A section. Please, if you have any comments or questions, you can type them in the chat box. Here I have some questions. In regards to the three working groups that you mentioned, between nine to 13, between 13 to 16, and between 16 to 19 years old, I would like you to tell us a little bit more about that uh, time in which you work with them, how many days per week, how many hours per day, how do you work on this? This is also that is including in the device or document that I mentioned before. I haven't talked about that today, but we have a workbook for each period and it's very clear, for example, for the uh, future clubs or avenue clubs between thir nine to 13 years old, we ask them to train four sessions per week, which is approximately eight hours. That would be ideal with an individual session besides the physical preparation, of course. And when we move on to the regional centers or between 13 to 16 years old and uh, clubs that are more structured do we ask them we ask them to train every day they have approximately seven to eight uh, training sessions per week and between 16 to 19 years old training is pretty much uh, just as high performance training. They have the possibility to um, improve their physical capacity because they're training every day. The, they're training, they train a bit 20 hours per week approximately and clubs organize this together with national centers. Perfect. So we see that the structure is very, uh, strong from the base, from the found, from its foundation, and it includes everything, the technical, tactical, psychological aspects. It's very complete. In be, Since nine years old, so they are selected, or do you just accept a specific number of athletes uh, per, and clubs send them, or how does this work? Well, to be admitted to a future club or Avenir club, there's a detection, a talent detection system at a regional and national levels. And in these different de talent detection levels, the people who are, or my colleagues who are responsible of this, uh, assign athletes to a, a, a future or avenue club uh, de uh, depending on the athlete. In other words, if, the, if an athlete is sure that he or she will be able to comply with all the training sessions and he or she will be helped in order to follow through, but we have to participate in, in order to uh, do the sound detection in France. So there are 13 regions uh, at a national level. So I think that these future clubs or avenue clubs are like the minimum level in at a region. And then we have regional, a regional level and then a national level. And every year, uh, we evaluate all of these clubs, these uh, future clubs or avenue clubs. Perfect. Must, most definitely there needs to be a talent detection process. So these works according to the standards that are required. So at which age do you start emphasizing on tournaments outside of France with the athletes. In the case of tournaments, well, athletes start 
when they are nine to 10 years old, but they're, even though there are tournaments, these organiz organizations are not very well structured. So there are competitions for young athletes uh, organized by the clubs. And this is called mini badminton for the first years, but then they start competing at nine to 10 years old. And then we have more competitions at a national level and then to the high level competitions. You are more advanced in terms of the pandemic. So have you found any difficulties in terms of training? And as part of your protocol, are you using, are you wearing masks to train? Or at least in doubles maybe? How, in the doubles event or how are you doing with this? No, this year it has been very complicated to uh, manage the situation in France since November. Every club is closed. There are no training sessions except for those athletes who are part of high level of the high level teams, the ones who train in the national centers. And of course, the national French team. So 89% of athletes in France cannot train, which is a problem for the Avenir clubs. Because we, yeah, we, we, by the end of March, we just had one group uh, training in France. And for now, we only have the national French team training. They are the only ones who can actually train and practice. So, these last 13 weeks, everything was uh, everything was uh, shut down except for the national team, and we hope to go back to the court. perfect. And which means, uh, which technology are you using in the junior level in terms of training? Technology to measure training in juniors. Well, we have physical preparation protocols to train. There has there have been researches uh, recently done, but mainly in senior athletes. In terms on how to gather these data, collect this data, but. There aren't many technological elements that allow us to assess athletes. We have videos. We work with the videos that we have recorded, but we don't have a lot of technology to assess athletes. Of course, we can also work on physical preparation and others. Perfect. One last question because we're running out of time. There are many questions, but I'm going to ask just one more to help the people who are writing. You were talking about uh, coach education. You have, you are working this online uh, with coaches, but what are the accreditations or the credentials that junior coaches have and how often should they renew these credentials? Are it, is this through the BWF? Or what kind of system do you have? Well, there are uh, several levels. The first level is the uh, is to be a voluntary for the for the clubs. And there's a lot of information for volunteers and they can uh, coach any type of athletes. We also have uh, diplomas from the state that are issued by the Ministry of Sport. And that uh, diploma allows you to be paid. We have different levels in that sense as well. I would say that there are three levels. The first level is mainly to coach in a club. Then we have another level for anyone who competes. 
And then there's a third level, which is for actual uh, training for high performance, so co to coach at a high performance level. So there are three levels of diplomas that allows you to be paid by the Ministry of Sport in France. And this is very well structured here. Perfect, very well. So unfortunately, the time has passed and we ran out of time. So thank you very much for such an interesting talk and for sharing with all our audience. Please, do you have any final thoughts for our audience that you would like to share with us? Well, thank you very much for giving me the possibility to share this information with you. Please check out the Federation's, our Federation's website and visit our YouTube channel from former BAD, uh, the French Federation, the Badminton French Federation, and write us a comment uh, about what we just discussed. I think we will see each other on May 18th for the physical preparation talk. Excellent. Thank you very much. And go to bed. You can go to bed now. Thank you very much for sharing with us. To our badminton family, we would like to invite you to our next webinar entitled WF Experience Level 3. This webinar will be held next Tuesday, April 27th at 3 p.m. Lima time when we will have the pleasure of having two well-known coaches, Shakira Wade from Barbados and Christina A. Cardi from Peru. We also encourage you to propose topics you're interested in through the chat box. Also, we invite you to check out our YouTube channel, BPAC's YouTube channel, where you can see this as well as other conference, conferences we have held in the past. Before we finish with this webinar, we would like to greet our audience who have joined us today. I would like to uh, greet Pierre Emmanuel from Haiti, David Chang from Canada, Lee Halima from Senegal, from Germany, Professor Hannah Felder and Mrs. Olga Munoz from Panama. Very well, on behalf of Badminton Pan American Confederation, we thank you for your participation. Greetings everyone, take care and see you next session. <laughs>